Reimagining Success, episode 144. You're listening to Reimagining Success, the podcast where we help you reimagine your future, designing a life and career beyond the nine to five that allows you the freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment that you've been dreaming of. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg. Now let's get started on those dreams. Okay, hello everybody. So for this month's Escaping the 9 to 5 interview, I'm here with Tom Pullen, who is coming at us from France, which is very exciting in this day and age that people are actually in different countries. Tom, why don't we dive straight in and can you tell us please what you were doing before in your previous corporate life and what you're doing today? Yeah, of course. Uh, So great to be here, Anna. Thanks very much for the invitation. Uh, So I basically spent 18 years working in big corporates, um, big multinational corporates. Uh, So I started my career actually at Boots, which uh, those of you based in the UK will know. Uh, So pharmacy, healthcare, beauty uh, stores and manufacturing as well. Then I moved to uh, Mars, uh, so worked in the chocolate factory for about four years, uh, working on some of the the big brands there that you know and love. And then I spent the last uh, 10, 11 years working for Danone, obviously famous for uh, yogurts, but also heavily into healthy waters and obviously healthy beverages as well. And the last five years at Danone, I was the global innovation director there, helping the business really to drive growth through new products, new business models, new services as well. Perfect. And what are you two doing today then, Tom? That sounds like the dream. The teenage me would have loved to work in beauty and chocolate and yogurt. It sounds amazing. So what was it that led you to to leave that innovation role and to start something up on your own? So actually, I think um, around 2016, uh, so I'd be working there for about 18 years. And I loved my corporate life, right? I loved the people that I worked with. I loved the ability to work on big brands. I loved all of the international travel. You know, really, I I feel very blessed to have had such a, a great corporate career that I enjoyed a lot. And it got to the stage in 2016 where I think it's because I was getting a bit older. And, you know, corporate life can often be quite cyclical. And I was going through the the annual cycle again, and I thought, oh, crikey, we're going to spend a long time working on these budget presentations. Um, And I know that, you know, we need to get them right, but maybe we're not going to deliver the plans that we kind of are going to put down on PowerPoint. Uh, And really, is this kind of what I want to spend the, the second half of my career doing? So I took a long, hard think, and I had some support as well from an executive coach during that time. And I I decided that actually, um, I really wanted to do something that was connected to what I was doing for the second half of my career, but in a way that did give me more autonomy, more freedom, uh, more ability to to create my own path, if you like. Um, And so I actually left the corporate world at the end of 2016 and created my company at the very beginning of 17, whilst also starting an executive MBA at the same time. Oh, wow. So you didn't make it easy for yourself. But I love that, that you, <laughs> you say that you so much enjoyed your corporate time, right? Because mm. I'm all, I've, since the beginning, and I've been talking about this for many years now too, I, I've always been reluctant to be negative about it because there are so many advantages. And yeah. I too, I didn't hate my job. I didn't even burn out. You know, it was sort of fine. And a bit like you, maybe just, it was a bit repetitive maybe. And there were, it was more the draw of a new challenge and something exciting, the autonomy and freedom mm. that you mentioned. I love when you're talking about the second half of your career too, because I don't know if it's in exact hours but certainly there are different acts aren't there there are different sort of seasons these days and you mentioned also the executive coach was that someone who uh, your work organized for you or did you go out and seek to work with someone yeah so um uh, during that year of 2016 i started to ask a few questions about what it was that i wanted to do Mm -hmm. and and danon was uh, as an organization was hugely supportive around trying to support that process of finding what i wanted to do did i want to stay in the corporate world did i want to go and do something completely different and so they actually uh found for me uh an executive coach um a, a very excellent executive coach who I still work with actually and that was really helpful because I think especially when you've spent so long in the corporate world Mm. and so long within one company you can become a little bit blinkered about the different options that you have 
um, you can start to think that certain paths are closed to you and the path that's most open to you is, is really a continuation of what you've already been doing. And that executive coaching actually really helped me to think much more broadly about what was possible. Um, and I think without that, that transition might have been more tricky and I probably would have been a bit more linear in what I went to do next, probably taken a safer route, which might have been good for the short term, but maybe not as exciting for the longer term. But I think that's natural, isn't it? We're in our comfort zone and that's what we see. As you said, if you've been 18 years in a particular sort of path, it's hard to open up and have the confidence and even just the sort of creativity and imagination to realise all the possibilities that are out there. And when you do open up to that, it's very exciting, but it can also be quite overwhelming, I suppose. How did you then <laughs> narrow in on, on what you're doing? It sounds like there's obviously a very clear thread between the innovation, but what have you been doing differently? Can you talk us through sort of what are you working on? What are you building now? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I think um, that the big area that my executive coach helped me with was to really challenge me on what was possible. And I guess um, some of the things that were a little bit frustrating at the end of my corporate life, I realized that I could kind of get rid of by starting on, on my own mm -hmm. and yet still help people and deliver the stuff on innovation that I, I really loved. And so that, that was great. And that was a real impetus to actually then creating the company that I, that I set up at the beginning of 2017, where in essence, I'm doing quite a similar type of role and quite similar types of um, service towards different teams and different organizations. Just now, instead of doing it just for one company and a set of different country teams within one organization. I'm now able to do that across, you know, worked across 25, 30 different corporations across all different kind of industries. And I really love that kind of diversity of challenge, the diversity of industry, the diversity of working across lots of different teams. Um, and so that provides a very challenging kind of stimulating environment in which I now work. And what were some of the challenges? So you mentioned obviously thinking perhaps a li little bit narrowly initially and you worked with the executive coach. Were there some other difficulty in, in, in going out on your own after those 18 years, you know, working within a big corporate structure? Yeah, I think um, I think this, you always ask yourself a question of security, mm. right? I think whether rightly or wrongly within the corporate kind of structure, you feel very safe. And often in reality, that's a kind of slightly false <laughs> safety, Absolutely. I think, um, because organizations do change and they do evolve. And that's going to only accelerate, I think, with everything mm -hmm. that we've seen happening with COVID over the last sort of 18 months. Um, but I think when you you choose to kind of leave behind uh, the company car, the pension, the bonus, you know, all of those nice kind of trappings that come with a senior role in, in the corporate world, it can be a little bit scary mm. because suddenly you have to like buy a car and I hadn't bought a car in like 15 years. And suddenly you have to organize your own health insurance mm. and your own pension. And I think if you've never done that, it can feel a bit kind of really am I doing the right thing? But then you realize that actually, you know, there is a huge number of entrepreneurs out there who all just do this. And so there's so much information and support that you can get um, to solve these challenges that you, you come across. I know one of the big ones for me when I started the company was everything to do with accountancy. Mm. You know, I mean, I I'd studied as part of my executive MBA, I'd studied accountancy, I'd studied business finance, corporate finance. And obviously, in my corporate career, I was managing P&Ls and all of those kind of things. But in reality, if you've never managed the accountancy for your own company, the only way to learn how to do it is to do yeah. it. <laughs> and, and so often at the beginning, there was that slight apprehension about, I don't know how to do this. But then you do it. And then you get better at it and that kind of fear gradually dissolves over time. And we laugh, but that's so important, isn't it? And, you know, I've got my little kids who are sort of learning to, you know, sit up and walk and so on. It's such a cliche, but they don't sort of fall over and go, oh, well, no, I'll never learn to, to walk. It's far too difficult. I see all these other people walking, but no, no, I've never walked before, so I can't do it. And it's so true. Of course, we have to and we can. We're, we're competent, capable people with many years under our belt and yet somehow we don't have the confidence we had when we were naive 
students coming out of university thinking we could yeah. change the world. So I think there's so much um, to be gained by as you say, learning as we go. Where else did you look for support? Did you need to work? I don't know, did you take any courses? Did you partner with any business coaches? What did you do to... to uh... Yeah, so so I, 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 kept, my, I kept my executive mm. coach over that whole period of transition. And that was super helpful because it helped sort of guide not only the direction that I was taking, but also the direction of the business mm. um, and also provide a bit of kind of uh, it's probably not the right word, but emotional support yeah. in the fact to know you've got someone who's there to get your back, mm-hmm. right? So that was a big help to me. The the executive MBA, so I, I did it at HEC Paris, mm-hmm. which is um, consistently ranked the number one business school in, in Europe. So it was a real uh, exciting mm-hmm. period as well to suddenly be working with some of the best professors in the world. And I was able to do two uh, specializations in innovation and entrepreneurship. So that also really helped to complement the experience that I'd had within my corporate role um, with some more sort of academic structures Mm. and frameworks. And I think when you leave the corporate world, you can quite often get into this sort of imposter syndrome Mm. um, kind of mindset. And I think knowing that I was going to come out after 18 months with a certificate that said, yes, you are now an executive master's in how to run a business Mm. and you've got everything to do with kind of leadership. You've understood a bit more about those things that you maybe didn't touch within your corporate career, like uh, finance or HR Mm. and some of those things. It It was a great way to transition, if you like, from the corporate world to then becoming a startup founder. And that's a big jump. And I think the executive coach and the executive MBA on top of that really Mm. helped me to make that transition in a much more, I would say, comfortable way, even though it was a lot of work to do. Yes, that is a lot of work. (laughs) Was that something you were doing part time, as you said, as you were founding the business? So you were studying while you were building? Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a part time modular mm. program actually. So it was about one week uh, in uh, physically uh, at mm. the campus, the university campus, uh, every sort of six, seven, eight weeks. So those weeks were very mm. intense, and then there was sort of reading and exercises to do around that. But in the d- time that wasn't taken up with that, obviously I was focusing really on uh, trying to design mm. the business and then launch the business and then uh, deliver the, the different elements mm. of the business after that. That sounds like a great combination because I think those of us who come from maybe more academic and corporate backgrounds have that tendency to, and I have clients who say, oh, I've got to now retrain, I need to invest in this four year course before I can even start mm. working. And of course that's not the case. Yes, there is that imposter syndrome. And of course, yes, it builds our confidence and our credibility externally, especially when we're working with high level corporate clients. But I think mm. that combination of you can already start building, designing and, and working with clients. But then on top, you're then, as you said, a year or two later coming out with this additional proof for your own sake, but also then externally for that extra bit of authority yeah. and credibility. I think the, the other thing that's quite interesting is though, and HEC was particularly good at this, but I know a lot of other business schools are, are sort of catching up, is that the, they do have a business incubator at, that's open to any of the kind of current students or alumni of the business school. So I was very lucky in the fact that I, that I was selected uh, for that based on the business plan mm. and based on the, the pitch that I did. And so I very quickly got taken into the, the world's largest startup campus where their incubator is based. So surrounded by 3,000 yeah. startuppers every single day, um, which really helped to accelerate the business because everyone's had the same challenges and the same mm. questions as you've had. And so if you're really surrounded by people who've kind of going through it or have been there, then there's a huge sense of being able to help one another and actually bring everyone sort of upwards in the right sort of growth mm. dynamic. Uh, and so that was an additional bonus, if you like, of getting into that business school world uh, that I wasn't necessarily expecting, actually, when I signed up. I think up. that community and the network is so important, isn't it? And having more sort of ongoing implementation and accountability support. I know when I did my coaching qualification, it was great, mm. but we all graduate from that thinking, hey, I'm a coach, I know what to do and, and I can build my business. And especially those who don't come from the business marketing background are a little bit clueless. Even I put up a website thinking, ta-da, that's it. And now suddenly mm. I'm going to get lots of clients <laughs> with this totally different business. And actually having that incubator model afterwards would have been fantastic to sort of stay in touch with people and then learn as you went and of course get access to the mentors as yeah. well. 
So you talked about autonomy and freedom before. Is that what your life looks like today? Paint a picture of the dream that you're living now that you've escaped and, and what that looks like. What's the best part? <laughs> So um, in terms of autonomy, definitely. In terms of freedom, I mean, they're kind of similar, but de definitely. I think if I look back over the last four and a half years since I, since I created the business, you know, you know, being completely honest, it's been a huge amount of hard work. I mean, I've worked probably more mm -hmm. hours and invested more energy than I could have ever possibly imagined um, when I set up the company. And that's not because I was naive, it's just that I've never done it. I think the key difference is that because you know that you're creating exactly what you want, exactly mm -hmm. on your terms, and that you can design that around the the real needs of your clients, that makes all the difference. And so, you know, it feels like that, that you're building something that has real value. And, you know, one of the things that I love is getting really positive feedback from, from our clients where they feel that and they, they really appreciate that because that validates, I guess, the choice that I made and the choice that I made in setting up the, the company that I, that, I, that I created. So, you know, worked super hard, but zero regrets, much more autonomy and freedom than I had before. And I really, that's really important to me. That's one of my core values, actually, when I went through the, the analysis, mm -hmm. as a lot of people do when they, they leave the corporate world. Autonomy and freedom were two of the biggest anchors that I had. Um, and so zero regrets. And now I guess the dream is that um, we have offices uh, about five minutes bike, bike away from where I live. Uh, I can walk it in about 15 minutes. So I'm getting the fresh air, the exercise every single morning without any big long commute, which is which is brilliant. Um, get got to work with about 25, somewhere between 25 and 30, you know, major corporates, which I think is is kind of a little bit unheard of, but also way beyond the dreams that I had when I when I set up. And most of those are repeating, mm -hmm. recurrent clients um, and we're consistently solving their problems. And that's what gets me up in the morning. You know, it's not about the method. It's not about the kind of the, the doing the work. It's the question really is, are we able to deliver concrete, tangible value to our clients? And that's irrefutably yes uh, at every project. So super happy about that. I'm really yeah, proud of that Yes, you should be. Well. It sounds like you're exactly at that sweet spot. It's, it's where you're you have the autonomy and the freedom and you're enjoying it and you're doing your thing in your zone of genius as they say, you're guy. if you've heard of that concept, you're jumping out of bed in the morning. And then on the other hand, <laughs> that is entrepreneurship, isn't it? It's solving problems. So the fact that you have those 20, 30 companies, and as you said, coming back to yeah. you, it's such a testament to the fact that you really are solving their problems and it's a great business model as well. So I guess to someone in your situation, so please go ahead, I, continue. I think no, no, what, what I was just going to say is that the challenge there, there is really one of the things I've been obsessed about since the start, actually, is how mm. do we scale that at the ability to scale it um, as of a, a, a digital startup? And that's kind of been a bit of an obsession of mine for the last four years. Uh, nearly there. <laughs> We've got some big, uh, big things coming up, some exciting new projects coming up and some big launches coming before the end of 2021 uh, but that's really the next big challenge to crack to make sure that we can impact mm. more companies uh, more clients mm. and, and all around the world as well because you know this is a, a global need that we're serving and we should be able to spread I'm not sure genius is the right word but we should be able to spread that a much a much more broad mm. geographic community than we do today which is primarily europe uh, but with a bit of latam a bit of asia uh, but i'd love to see that be really truly global mm. oh uh, that's by exciting this time sounds year. like there's some big news coming up later this year i mean that is the next challenge isn't it we start off first needing to or wanting to reach <laughs> whether it's individuals or companies but then as you say you hit it, and even you have a team of of um of people as well right in your offices and so on so that's exciting that that leads me to ask another question which is what does success look like for you then if you're scaling you want to be global more countries you know is there a limit to your dreams or, or you know do you have a vision of where you want to end up we're just going to see how far you can go and, and just keep growing and keep experimenting and, and solving problems uh, I, 
I guess I, I'm, I know that there's significantly mm. greater potential than what we're delivering today. And the last mm. four years have, have proven that. Um, I guess I don't put any specific limits on the, the dream, if you like. Um, I've got some secret uh, KPIs, some secret objectives uh, that I won't share with you here. Um, but, you know, I, I really hope that we can find this model that mm. gives even more autonomy, even more freedom, and most importantly, even mm. more increased value to, to our customers, which is the real obsession <laughs> that we have every day. So no specifics to share with you today, but uh, Absolutely. No, watch I won't this let you. I won't uh, make you shed your secrets. They can, they'll be safe, don't worry. We won't um, reveal too much too soon, but exciting to see what comes next. And um, so the question I was going to ask you was, of course, what advice could you give to someone who's in the same position as you were? Maybe, you know, very comfortable, happy even in their role. It's fine. It's interesting, but oh, getting a little bit repetitive, maybe dreaming mm -hmm. of a bit more of this excitement, autonomy and freedom that you've been talking about. What um, could help them overcome that fear of leaving behind the security and, and dare to go out and, and see what they can create? So I would definitely recommend um, teaming up with some mm. kind of external coach, someone who's not part of the organization and who mm. you don't have a personal link with, but can, can give you an objective point of view and really ask you some challenging questions. You know, for me, that as you know, that the mm. power of a coach is really about asking questions. It's not really about mm. providing solutions. And some of those questions, very basic questions, can be very powerful in helping you to redefine mm. what that kind of second half of your career would look like. Um, for me personally, the mm. executive MBA really helped. It helped build a lot of confidence. It helped build a lot of network. Um, and to be honest, I just really enjoyed it as well. I loved you know, effectively going back to school and that feeling of investing back in myself because, you know, I wasn't sort of giving every day to mm -hmm. uh, my corporate organization. It was pure time based, uh, based on trying to help myself and trying to invest in myself. And so that felt really good, actually. Um, and yes, it was a real investment because these things do cost a lot of money. But I came out of it as everyone comes out of it, really kind of feeling transformed. And I think confident that you're able to do something that maybe you weren't mm. able to dare to do before. Um, so I would recommend some kind of um, transition course or some kind of transition qualification mm. uh, to make you more employable if you need to go back into a, a more standard job or to build your own personal confidence. And I think the last thing is, you know, take action. You know, it sounds crazy, but a lot of people, I think, have these kind of thoughts or dreams or ideas about what they could be doing or what they'd like to be doing. And I think the reality is that, you know, life goes so fast and you don't often see just how fast it's going. And so I think if you have these things, mm. don't let them drag in the back of your mind, either decide to do them or decide not to do them. But don't let them fester <laughs> because that's when kind of regrets, I think, can happen. And no one wants to get to the end of their career and go, oh, damn, I wish I'd done that. Um, so I would really, you know, a coach can help with that. But if you've got ideas about how you could create something, do take the time and the effort to explore them and see whether that could be a viable next career step for you. Uh, because in my case, at least, it was a very good step to I take. I love that. So many nuggets. I mean, the exploration is such an important step. And as you said, with the coach, being able to open up and seeing possibilities perhaps you hadn't considered mm. before. One of my key values has been personal development. That was one that came up for me in addition to freedom actually coming out of my corporate job. And it's so empowering, isn't it, as yeah. well, to invest in yourself, as you said, because it's something at least I took advantage of the programs and training capability building that the company offered. But it's the kind of thing that your manager would say, you can go on this and what's available but of course now you can and should and need to um, invest in your own development which as you said is more expensive when you have to pay for itself but it also makes you choose really well um, what's going to really add value to you. and it's exciting I mean I, I used to be I guess a bit of a geek at school and loving the studying so I love I love that kind of thing as well um, but I love what you said take action because the worst thing and again I, I never want to encourage people to 
go one way or the other but the important thing is to choose as you said because it's really as I would say soul destroying to to want to do something about it and not do it if you're happy if you think it's not the right moment then of mm. course you know stay where you are but enjoy it that feeling of being over here but wanting to be over there is really mm. difficult to to live with so I think you need to make a decision one way or the other I think building on your point, I think that capability building mm. will become super important, especially within the changes that are going to happen in some of these large corporate organizations and also the way in which they're going to sort of evolve their businesses and their business models over the next few years. And whether you're inside or whether you've chosen to be outside, you know, investing in mm. building your own capability, the capability of your team is going to be a real competitive advantage going forward. Uh, and we, we, you know, we already start to see that. So I think that's a trend that's just going to carry on and, and just be a roller coaster, really. Absolutely. And, and it's something I've been talking about on, on the podcast, in fact, that the listeners all have been listening to the last few weeks is the importance of doing that for your personal brand as well. Whether you want to now or have any thought of leaving anytime soon, it's better to build that proactively, whether you might want a promotion later or change role or change to a different company or go out on your own. That's valuable career capital. Mm -hmm. It's great to build those relationships and networks regardless of your future. So I think that's a great uh, reminder to, to, as you said, invest in yourself and whatever your future goals to really focus on. On, on putting yourself, positioning yourself, I guess, as as uh, strongly as as possible for whatever you want, might want to do in the future. Yeah. Amazing, thank you, Tom. So many um, insights, Absolutely. and I'm conscious of your time, but I, I want to let you go. But can you tell us where we can find you online? Where can we read more about your startup? Yeah, of course. Um, so feel free to go to the website, which is innovinco.com. So I -N -N -O -V -I -N -C -O. Uh It needs a bit of refreshing, a bit of updating. But uh, as always uh, with the startup <laughs> entrepreneurial life, it's on a to-do list. <laughs> but probably the best thing to do uh, if you want to see a little bit more about what I'm up to, what we're up to, then you can check out all of our social media feeds as well. Uh, so Tom J. Pullen on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, obviously as well, very active on LinkedIn there. Um, and uh, you can check you know, out Ironically, Innovinco and I come from a digital marketing background, well. so it's tough to say this. I find that possibly, you know, the best companies actually don't have great websites because you don't need to because you're so good at what you do. So, you know, don't be too ashamed. It obviously means that you're doing something right. People come to you even if you don't <laughs> think that you've got the snazziest website. So I think that's a good sign, if anything. <laughs> thank you so much Tom. such you. a pleasure and, and you, so Anna. many useful insights there. thank you for taking the time to share your story thank you you're welcome it's been a real pleasure thanks Anna if you'd like to create your own transition story and escape the 9 to 5 to work for yourself then come and join us over in the business incubator this is a comprehensive online program and community designed to give you the roadmap that you need to help you figure out what you really want to do come up with a workable plan and take the right steps to achieve it. Read more and join us over on onestepoutside.com forward slash nine to five. That's onestepoutside.com forward slash nine to five.